I mean, at the beginning of the movie, he's like a guy who um, has lived his life according to convention and sort of what society says and how he should. He gets married at a particular age when everyone says is the time you should be married. He's working the job and successful in all the sort of conventional ways that we would consider success monetarily. And, all. you know, he, he looks the part, he plays the part, you know, he wears nice suits. Uh, and, um, and, then this sort of a bit of a this tragedy strikes, and he uh, he loses his wife. And in the midst of that, I think because he's so unaware of who he is as a person or how he, he doesn't know how he feels, um, and so he goes on a journey, this odd journey, after a, a packet of peanut M and M's gets stuck in a vending stuck in a vending machine at a hospital the night that his wife dies. He starts writing letters to the vending machine company, complaint letters, but he starts spilling his heart out to them. Which leads him to connect with Naomi Watts' character, and um, she's, you know, part of customer service at this vending machine company, and they are unlikely friends, and so is her son, becomes friends with him, and they all sort of change together. I believe that freedom is on the other side of discipline, and I, I believe in preparation. I, I believe in my craft, and sometimes, you know, you go full out in preparation. You spend tons of time to try and figure out the world in which the character is and, and, and existed in and and the the you know the job that they do whatever it may be and that you know you put that into yourself to try and you know ultimately i think if you spend enough time you become that but in this movie john mark didn't want any of that he didn't want to rehearse he wanted i think to keep me unstable and and kind of knock me in a place where i didn't get to do the things that i'm normally doing in, in preparation so in that way yeah i was nervous you know? I believe in trying to play characters and make movies that are, you know, where they, I mean, I feel like where the characters are complicated as we are as, as, we are as humans, you know, messy, um, struggling a bit, also full of joy and also full of hope. Like, I, I, I believe in all of those things. Um, but I'm just not as interested in kind of portraying the world like everything is great. Uh, <laughs> I think the world is great, but I don't think everything is great all the time. Yeah. I think we're always fighting convention in a way, or we're not. We just succumb to it. And ultimately, all that really matters is what you as an individual believe in, regardless of what other people tell you you should believe in. And that's kind of, like, I guess that's in a way what you try and do as an artist in one way or another, but I think all human beings should be doing that, because I think we'd have a totally different world if we did that. I loved her for all her quirks and um, that she was that she has a significant change through the course of the story. She wakes up and she never normally would ever come into contact with a guy like this. He's like a type A personality who's an overachiever and she's just sort of someone who's plodding along and meandering through life and not really asking any of the big questions and they kind of bump into each other and are able to have this profound effect on one another. It was nice to get together and work together. He takes his work seriously, as do I, and, but we're also you know, trying to have fun while doing it. There's so much that happens sort of on the fly, so I'm able to embrace a new idea, um, which is a really fun way to work for an actor. It just keeps you on your toes and keeps everything fresh. It's a pretty unpredictable uh, storyline and then to find out that 
you know, Jake and uh, Naomi were aboard was a um, great incentive. The character I play is Phil Woodward, and he's an investment banker uh, down in the financial district in, uh, in Manhattan. And uh, Jake's character, Davis, has been working with me. He is my son-in-law, and he's been with the firm for about 10 years and married to my daughter for about 11. What I take back from this film is um, people have to grieve differently when they um, lose a loved one, and you can't expect a person to grieve in the same way that you do. He definitely has this kind of loose set environment and, and it was the kind of thing me and Jake would be doing a scene and it would finish and, and we'd go for one, two minutes just kind of throwing stuff out there and I feel like when there's no words written down and there's nothing you're going off of, sometimes that's when you find the most special moments because you're truly just coming from what your character's feeling. You know, he brings this, this fun, light attitude to set, and, and you know, what I love about it is he brings this truth and this realism to his characters and, and it makes you bring truth. We'd be chatting before a scene, then the scene would start, and it's like, I hate you. You know, and, and it really was that, because our characters have this tension, and, and, and we butt heads a lot, but that was, that was definitely just our characters. Actually, that drumming scene, uh, where I'm drumming and Jake's dancing, that happened completely there. Yeah, I've been drumming for a few years, and I just love it, but yeah, that scene was, was entirely improv I did uh, demolition work as a younger man. From 16 till 20, I was tearing down houses, you know, so... Once you get them all torn down, you see the frame of the house and um, you realize like how things are put together. I couldn't build it, but I understood like what held things in place. And I think I ca carried that analogy about life with me for a while until it came in handy and it became useful and I started to write about it. I'd lost myself in a way and the voice of this character was a, a cathartic way to deal with that grief. He lost, he lost a human being. I lost myself. I felt in such good hands working with Jake. Our first scene we shot together, which was the first time we'd met, um, uh, was the flashback scene, which I'm not sure how much is in the film anymore, but we kind of went back to college when we met. And so I got to kind of meet him and, and experience that first moment with him on camera. I was really intrigued by playing a character with this company, of course, that that was um, not of this world. I mean, she's sort of composed of memory, sort of composed of um, grief, and I was interested in, in how to embody somebody who was sort of not governed by normal law. <laughs> it's an amazing story of grief. That's really the, the main sort of kernel of it that I see. Uh, I think it's about looking back and looking ahead and, and figuring out what pieces of your life you want to put back together and which you don't need anymore. And I, I think change is so much about that, figuring out what's useful to you and what isn't. I play the mother of a, a girl who uh, is killed in a car accident driving with Jake Gyllenhaal's character. And um, throughout the movie I'm just deeply grieved about my daughter and are, am assuming that Jake's character, Davis, feels the same way. And uh, Chris Cooper plays my husband and he and I are mystified by why Davis seems to be behaving in a really odd way and it really seems to be a nervous breakdown of sorts for him where he has to just demolish anything he can think of in order to get back to who he, th he really is because I think he's built a lot of he's put a lot of walls around himself and built a lot of f falsehoods around who he is. Well, first of all, there was a lot of uh, changing of dialogue during the um, during the shoot. Like just before we'd say it, he'd say, "You know, why don't you do this?" Or why don't? Or look, there's birds flying up there. Let's get let's get you walking through here with the birds. Or let's get you know. He's visual. He's he's emotional. He gets the emotional idea. He gets the the script. Yeah. Okay.